everyone. I hope you're having a great day. It's Chris here from ChristopherJ.net and this is lesson DB5, how to transport a double bass. And by the way, this is a continuation of my journal of things that I've learned as a beginning adult bass student that I hope to share with whoever can benefit from it. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about things to consider when you're moving or transporting your bass. Number one, use a bass bag. The bag that I have, which you can see in the picture, came with the bass when I bought it. And it provides a pretty good level of protection, but the padding is not very thick. So I'm considering buying a higher quality bag when I have the money. So far, the Eastman Presto soft case, model number CB60, shown in the picture, looks pretty good. This bag comes with wheels which I really like. I've had a few gigs where it's been a long walk from the car to the building and being able to roll Bubba, my nickname for my bass, would sure take a load off. You can get the Presto bag from lindawest.com and you can go to my site for a link directly to the product page. Number two, get yourself a stand. My stand is the Ingalls model SA-22 stand for both cello and double bass. It has bottom supports which are height adjustable and the supports are covered with um, a soft rubber type material so they don't dent your bass. And it has a hook on the back to hang your bow from. And also a latch to close across the neck of the bass so that it doesn't jump out of the stand which would be kind of disastrous. Thirdly, you should protect the edges of your base with some kind of edge protectors. And this is one of the very first things I added to my base. The ones that I have are leather and kind of cushiony. And they keep the wood of the edges of the bows just off the ground. So when you lay the base down on its side, it won't get scratched. And I got mine from Gallier Music. And they specialize in nothing but things for the base. And I highly recommend you go visit their site. And number four, in a vehicle. Number one rule is you got to be careful. The base is pretty large and bulky and things can easily get damaged if you're not careful loading it in and out of your vehicle. It's best to put the base on its side with the back against the wall. And if possible, secure it with something such, a, such as a bungee cord. Or at least brace it so that it won't fall over when you go around the corner. Okay, number four. Now we're going to talk about transporting your base in a vehicle. The number one rule is you have to be careful because the base is very large and bulky and things can get damaged pretty quickly if you're not careful loading it in and out of your vehicle. So it's best to put the base on the side uh, with the back against the wall. Um, if you have something, a larger vehicle, that's ideal, like a minivan or an SUV um, or a pickup truck. I have a pickup. Uh, if you're going to put it in a pickup truck, make sure um, it has a covering, a canopy over the bed, because uh, you don't want your base rained on. Otherwise, you need to be absolutely sure of the weather forecast that it's not going to rain while you're driving around. And if you do put your base in the truck, try to secure it with something like a bungee cord or some kind of strap so it doesn't roll over when you go around the corner. Or at least brace it somehow with something um, that's not going to shift. If you only have a small vehicle like a sedan, this next clip shows you how to safely load your base into a, a small car. If you only have a small vehicle, here's what you need to do. Open the door. If you, you need a reclining seat, so recline it, lay it all the way down as far as it will go, on the passenger side of course. If your base bag has shoulder straps, unhook the straps from the, the ring um, that they attach to because they tend to get hooked on the headrest in the car. Next pick up the base and load it 
through the doorway, uh, lower bout end first. And when you load it into the car, it needs to uh, go up and over the driver's seat headrest and then pivot it back to the left. Be careful not to put any strain on the neck while you're doing this. And then shift it and lie it down flat on the seat back. Next, you need to make sure there's no pressure at all on the neck or the scroll. So get something like a pillow or a folded uh, towel like I have here and place it under the shoulders of the base and then check to make sure there's no pressure on the scroll. And to be a safe driver and keep the base from shifting, put the seat belt, the shoulder belt, around the base and secure it not too tight but just lightly. And that's how you do it. Here's my explanation about Bubba. When I first got my base, I decided to give it a name. I don't know why, I guess I just like to name things. And because he's big like a Bubba, and he makes Bubba sounds like a Bubba, I decided to call him Bubba. And while I was at my local hardware store, I saw a trailer hitch cover named Bubba. And of course I just had to get it, because it's going to go in the back of my truck, which I haul around Bubba in. And now it's a Bubba truck. And so now you know. Have fun playing. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.